welcome to this channel. Hope you are all doing great. In this episode, we'll discuss Uniform Civil Code. Before starting the discussion, I request you to like, share and subscribe the channel. Introduction India is a land of diversity of various religion, caste, subcaste. Every religion broadly have its own personal laws based on the religious, faith, text, customs, traditions and dictums. Such as Hindus are governed by the Hindu laws and Muslims have their own personal laws. Again, in the religion, each area, community, sub-community, sub-caste have their own unique customs which govern them and it's vary from one place to another. Broadly, we see among the Hindus the Dayabhaga school and Mitakshara school. In case of the criminal law, there is one codified law which is applicable to all irrespective of religion, caste, creed, sex and follows the same procedures. Say, the punishment of a murder is same for the Hindus, Muslims, Christians, Jains and others but not so in case of the civil laws. The personal laws mainly dealt with marriage, custody of child, inheritance, adoptions, succession, partition, guardianship, legacies and others. But there are some exceptions we find in case of the contract act and partnership act. In that case, they are unified and applicable to all equally. The objective behind the Uniform Civil Code is to bring an uniform civil laws for all irrespective of religion, caste, subcaste, creed and sex. In other words, all citizens of India will be subject to one civil law that is one nation, one law. Let us now understand the background and history of the Uniform Civil Code. The concept of unified or uniform law started during the British regime in 1835. Then the British government set up a commission for the united common law. But the commission in the Lex Locke report 1840 suggested for the uniform criminal law and does not approve the proposal for the uniform civil code as the Indian society was divided and diversified in various religion wherein the emphasis was given for the unified codification of the criminal law, contract and evidence and further recommended to keep the personal law of the Hindus and the Muslims separate. Keeping the distance from the religious issues, the British firstly enacted the Indian Succession Act 1865 to protect the women's economic rights. Another Interesting act was the first version of the Special Marriage Act of 1872 where it was applicable to those who renounced their religion. But the act of 1923 allowed all to cover without renouncing the religion. In 1941, few years before the independence, the British government formed the B.N. Rao Committee to codify the Hindu law. On reviewing the 1937 act, the committee suggested the civil code for the succession and marriage for the Hindus. Later, it was codified in form of Hindu Succession Act 1956 and Hindu Marriage Act 1955 after the independence. The concept of the Uniform Civil Code is found in the part 4 of the constitution in the article 44 and falls under the concurrent list. It is a part of the directive principle of state policy. The objective behind the insertion of the very article is to protect the vulnerable sections including the religious minorities and women and to strengthen the nationalist flavor among the citizens. In turn, it will uplift the sense of unity. In the part 3 of the constitution that is article 25 to 28 of the constitution deals with the right to profess and practice one's own faith. In other words, it guarantees the religious freedom and it falls within the fundamental rights of the citizen. In comparison, DPSP is not enforceable in court but fundamental rights are enforceable by the law courts. Article 37 makes it clear that DPSP shall not be enforceable by courts. Another hurdle in the constitutional part is that 
the constitution gives some special privileges for protecting the unique culture and customs of different communities in various parts of the country such as Nagaland, Mizoram and Kashmir which will come into conflict with the basic structure of UCC. The question of uniform civil code first came in the case of Shah Banu in 1980s. Thereafter, in the Daniel Latifi case, Sharla Mudgal case, and at present we can mention the case of Shaira Banu, that is Triple Talak case. The objective of framing the UCC is to replace the personal laws with the common set of laws in the matter of inheritance, succession, marriage and divorce, custody, adoption. If we look at the Portuguese ruled Goa after independence, that Goanese are ruled by the Goa Civil Code, that is the unified civil code for the Goanese. There are a lot of challenges to impose UCC as because the country is diversified by religion, culture and customs. There are some specially protected community who still now require the special privileges. Like any other factors, there are so many pros and cons for implementing UCC. Dr. Ambedkar once in the Constituent Assembly said, no one need to be apprehensive that if the state has the power, the state will immediately proceed to execute that the power may be found to be objectionable by the Muslims or by the Christians.